Your feature bout at the top of the bill, where you're about to witness the two-time Olympic champion, Julio La Cruz, take on the brave and bold Spaniard, El Matadore Emmanuel Leyes. Without further ado, please put your hands together as he makes his ring walk first, fighting out of the black corner. Please help me welcome, from Spain, Emmanuel Reyes. As I mentioned, Reyes originally from Cuba, behind Julio La Cruz in the Q and light heavyweight. Then did actually move up to heavyweight, but Erizani Savon was at heavyweight, so it's not been easy, but he made the move over to Spain, picked up national championships, quarter finalist in Tokyo, silver medalist at the Europeans last year, bronze medalist at the World Championships the year before. And quarter finalists of the and world's now, this year. got his opponent and challenger here at the IBA Champions Night for the vacant undisputed champion heavyweight a 92 kg division title. Please help me welcome the highly decorated two-time Olympic champion as he fights out of the goal corner representing his home in Cuba. Please help me welcome Julio La Cruz. So La Cruz a two-time Olympic champion, five-time world champion, three times Pan American Games champion, multiple wins in WSB. He has really been the outstanding amateur fighter of the last 10 years. For a stage there seemed absolutely unbeatable. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived. Your final championship matchup of the evening here at your IBA Champions Night, taking place right here in the heart of the Kingdom of Thailand in the beautiful Patong Boxing Stadium in Phuket. Your main event of the evening is proudly brought to you by Mr. Umar Kremlev, the IBA president. With this official bout being sponsored by Gold, Gold, Travel, Gold Caravan Travel Agency. You're about to witness your historic main event of the evening. Two former 2021 IBA men's finalists battling it out right here to determine their place for the pound for pound undisputed champion of the ring. Your five judges being represented here are officially ringside from Jordan, Rami Albetar. From Algeria, Sid Ali Mokretari. From Kyrgyzstan, Jamila Borkoeva. From Korea, Jung Sok Cho. And finally, from Uzbekistan, Alexander Khamidov. In charge of the all the officials ringside. From Australia, Mr. Wayne Rose. And with the action against your six man in the center of the ring by the bell, representing the IBA. By way of Turkey, with referee Yasser Sinar. First, fighting out of the black corner, ladies and gentlemen, he enters the ring tonight, standing at a height of 190 centimeters tall, weighing officially at 91.4 kgs. Here is, as we present, the former 2021 IBA men's bronze medalist, the former 2022 EUBC silver medalist, and the current 2023 European Games heavy heavyweight bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, representando a Carolina de España, presenting El Matadore, Emmanuel Reyes. And now, introduce his opponent, fighting out of the goal corner. Tonight he ends the ring, standing at a height of 183 centimeters tall, winging officially at 91 and a half kgs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is as we present the two-time Olympian, highly decorated champion, the former 2016 gold medalist from Rio de Janeiro, the former 2020 gold medalist from Tokyo, the five-time undisputed 2011, 2013, 2015, 2017, and reigning 2021 undisputed IBM men's light heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, representando Camoe de Cuba, La Sombra, Julio La The stage is set, our fighters are ready. Referee Yasser Sinar will now be giving his final instructions to the boxers. Okay guys, keep your head up, keep your punches up, no holding, listen to me, okay? Shake hands. So a touch of gloves between the two. 
two fighters who know each other well. A hug there from Rolando Asabal, the long-time Cuban national team head coach. And away we go. Richie outlined the achievements there of the crews, and they are considerable. Back in 2019, when he won bronze at the World Championships, it was around that time that he got stopped by Khalil Ko. People were wondering whether that could be it. But he moved up. He moved up in weight to heavyweight which was a lot of extra weight. And then the question was, would he be able to move and box in that way that we become accustomed to with those matrix-like reflexes at the heavier weight? Would he be able to hold a shot from bigger punches? And the answer has been yes and yes. He's not quite as quick as he used to be, but that fast twitch is still there. You can see that in the opening few seconds of the fight. As I said, for a stage, he looked absolutely unbeatable. He lost in the London Olympics in the quarterfinals to Esquiva Falcao and that was a, an upset. That was an upset. But from then on, 2013 through to 2017, taking in Olympic Games, three world championships, a lot of WSB, he looked, as I said earlier, borderline unbeatable really. He did lose the odd fight. In WSB, I remember Alberto Ramirez beating him, but they were always contentious. Reyes. Doing some good work to the body there. He's significantly the bigger of the two. In terms of his frame. Again, there's those reflexes from the crews. Just pulling his head back. Got knocked out in the quarterfinals at the most recent World Championships by Lazarus Bek Mullajonov of Uzbekistan. Reyes went out at the same stage in the last state against Armenia, Narek Manassian. Not the only Cuban fighter to find his way over to Europe or Central Asia. Javier Ibanez boxing for Bulgaria these days it was a bantamweight for Cuba pretty sure he boxed at the 2017 World Championships actually Lauren Alfonso boxing for Azerbaijan at cruiserweight got a gold medal in Belgrade a silver in the most recent version good work there from La Cruz right hand got through and he felt it Reyes as well and then there was a snappy combination off the back of it solid punching from La Cruz Reyes trying to get in close enough to get something done but just hitting shoulders there really and that's on La Cruz's round courtesy of that really good exchange towards the end of it Solid right hand from the Cruz. There are those reflexes. There's that little pullback, that sway. He's still got that. He's still got that judgment of distance. Still so, so difficult to land on clean. You might catch him with one every now and again, but what you never really do, and this is true of all great defensive fighters, fighters who can make you miss, you very rarely hit them with a combination.
And that's the frustration for Reyes right there. He gets his feet close enough, lets his hands go, but he just can't hit anything. And as boxers always tell you, missing is really, really tiring. And it's demoralising too. He steps in and lands the left hand there. He felt something on the end of the glove there. It wasn't clean, but it'll give you some encouragement. He's just so hard to hit the cruise, and I'm not just talking about clean to the head. It's just the way he moves that upper body left to right, that lateral movement. He even makes that torso, the shoulders, that broad chest. He even makes that hard to hit. Good left hand into the body there, though, from Reyes. And that is such a typical La Cruz pose. Just weight more on the back foot than the front. Gloves down, chin up. Just teasing you, goading you, really. He's stuck to the plan here, Reyes, in this second round. La Cruz hasn't landed a lot. Nice jab there from Reyes. <laughs> Referee just telling Reyes to keep his punches up there. I think he's right to go down low look for that body looking for the lead uppercut a couple of times there uh, Lacruz right hand there for Reyes is pretty close and he's worked the harder of the two in that round and it may not be all that eye catching what he's doing Reyes but it is quite effective and the Cruz, as I say, hasn't really landed an awful lot clean himself there. So doing the unglamorous work there, Reyes. I'm not saying it's necessarily enough to have won in the round, but I do think that that, as I say, that dog work almost, that is what you have to be prepared to do against someone like the Cruz, especially over five rounds. Left hand just caught him as he stooped off to his right hand side there, La Cruz. Well, the judges, all five of them have gone with La Cruz in that second round. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just that that was a tighter round than the first round. There's that pullback. Uppercut on the inside there from La Cruz. Good right hand from Reyes, that caught La Cruz on the side of the head. That got his attention. Cruz with his own right as he just sunk into the ropes. He made Reyes look quite clumsy there. Just fencing with that jab, flicking it up from the waist and then jumping up off his feet almost there La Cruz that left hand from Reyes that is a good percentage shot for him to step in and throw that left hand low that left hook because he does dip to his right quite a lot La Cruz and you'll hit something with that at this point he's got to start doing more than that I, I appreciate that but you cannot underestimate the the value of just feeling something on the end of that glove, particularly against somebody like this, 
the chances of you landing that shot that Khalil Ko did that put him down, that Joshua Buatsi did actually in the 2015 World Championships in Doha that put him down, although he didn't go on to win the fight, Buatsi, the chances of that are small. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have ambitions to do it. It can always happen, but it hasn't happened much. Lovely stuff there from La Cruz. Look at the balance and the timing. Just pulled back, pulled his weight onto his back foot, timed him with the right hand. Reyes on his way in, was caught standing a bit tall, and down he went. He's not hurt, but that was just an immaculate bit of boxing there from La Cruz. Made him fall short, and then just bounced back and threw that right. All about the timing. And that is why he's so good. Final few seconds of round three, and he's about to go 3 0 up here. The Cruz with a couple of rounds left to go. Staying on his feet in between rounds. But there it is. There it is. Just pulls that weight back onto the back foot, makes him fall short, and then springs back in straight right hand. Travel nowhere really. But because he's on his way forward there, Reyes, and he didn't quite have his balance, down he goes. Beautiful stuff. And a couple of 10-8s there for La Cruz in that third round. So he's a long way ahead here with a couple of rounds to go. Look, good left hand there from Reyes. Led with the right hand and followed it with the left. And that just landed on La Cruz. He's going to do everything he can here, Emmanuel Reyes, to put a dent in La Cruz. He's got five rounds. He might have felt he would have been hoping, I think, that Rounds four and five might be his. But the deeper it went into the fight, the bigger advantage he would have. But Lacruz is just mercurial. An absolute ton of WSB experience. But that was all at light heavyweight, not at heavyweight. He's just staying out of trouble here, Lacruz. Looks to lead off with a very extravagant left uppercut there, though. Just as I say that, that was not the punch of a cautious man.
closing seconds of round four. Just uses the ropes well there, La Cruz. Shake of the head there from Reyes. It's frustrating because he felt like he got him where he wanted him, closed in. La Cruz just dips off to his right hand side, comes up under his shoulder. And no good. Well, he did catch him right on the end of that left hook as La Cruz was just doing a little bit of a shimmy in front of him. Final 10 seconds of round four. Reyes just going with this right until the very end. Long right hand just reaching there from Reyes. So the final round of the night coming up. It's slipped by very quickly this. Some top, top performers on show. And nobody more so than this man on the left hand side of your screen there. Boxing in the white, Reyes in the black, a very good fighter himself, but La Cruz is absolutely outstanding, has been for such a long time. Sticks with that jab, La Cruz. He still seems to have the same amount of energy now as he did at the start of the fight. He's always kept himself in phenomenal condition, as all these top elite amateurs do, and that obviously is a major factor in the longevity. That first world title in 2011. So from 2011 to 2023. World Championships and Olympic Games combined, that's 10 in total. And he's won seven of them. There's that pullback right hand again there from La Cruz. That one delivered slightly wider Reyes just keeps plowing forward I've always thought it would be fascinating to see what the crews would be like over 10 rounds I'm not sure we're necessarily going to get to see that but people have always wondered the way he fights, was it just perfectly suited to that three round format where he could just make you miss, you just cannot lay a glove on him, but that maybe that lateral movement would fade as we got deep into a, a 10 round fight, it's not faded here, it never used to fade in WSB back in the day, but maybe around, around 7, 8, 9 it would begin to slow down and all of a sudden you would be able to catch him as I say I don't think we're going to get the opportunity to find that out necessarily so final few seconds here and Julio La Cruz is slip sliding his way towards another comprehensive win and he knows it and Reyes knows it as well and the Olympic champion is about to become I have a champion as well in this pro boxing series. It's a tough job fighting him. Reyes knows that. And he absolutely knows that. And he stuck to the plan there. He stuck to the task. 
but he just couldn't ever do anything really to slow the cruise down. It's been a good night at the Patog Arena. It's a great space, this, for boxing, for Muay Thai. Probably get about four or 500 in here, I reckon. It's nice and tight, really atmospheric. Okay, so let's get the final verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our concluding bout of the evening here at your IBA Champions Night, coming to you live from the beautiful city of Phuket, Thailand, where you've been witnessing seven elite champions newly crowned across seven international historic bouts, where IBA is the home of global boxing. Before we go to the judges' scorecard after a highly fought map, we'd like to kindly take a moment and invite a very special VIP into the center of the ring. Please help me welcome our international bo uh, IBA Board of Directors member, Ms. Marta Forsen Celaya. Ladies and gentlemen, joining Ms. Marta Forsen-Salaya, our board of direct members here at the IBA. Along with her is the vacant IBA Champions Night Heavyweight 92 kg belt. As well as that, we have our $10,000 for our grand ceremonial prize winner. And our runner-up will receive the total amount of $5,000. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards where all your judges have seen it the same way. Ruling in favor of your winner by points, declared by unanimous decision. And... Still the reigning undisputed IBA heavyweight champion of the world! Representando Cabo de Cuba, La Sombra, Julio La Cruz. So it's that familiar winning feeling for Julio La Cruz. And he was on fine form tonight. That knockdown was an absolute joy to behold. Not for Emmanuel Reyes, but he picks up a check for 5,000 US dollars anyway. 10,000 for La Cruz. And yet another trophy to go in that cabinet at the Cuban Boxing Federation. He really is something very, very special. I hope he's around for a while yet. I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Hundreds of fights he's had, but he is still Ladies capable of doing it at the top, top level. Undisputed IBA heavyweight champion and of the world, tonight's La Sombra Julio Boxing to a close. It's been thoroughly entertaining. I've very much enjoyed it. A win at light welterweight, first and of all for that, Megan Declare. Then at middleweight for Valentina Calto over the two women's fights over five two-minute rounds. And then in the men's, the a really good performance from Hassan Boy to Smart of a flyweight against Martin Molina. Mujibido Tursunov beating Mukhamed Sabah Bazabai at light welterweight.